Hi all, Neo Rambler here with just a quick warning about the video up ahead in that for the first 11, 13 minutes, something like that, um, my microphone was disconnected and I didn't realise, so my re commentary recording was recorded via the laptop microphone, um, so it's going to be really, really tinsely and hard to hear. Um, for some of you that might be a sigh of relief, <laughs> um, but yeah, it only lasts for about 11 to 13 minutes, I do correct it for the rest of the video, so don't worry, the whole video, which I know is over an hour long, if you choose to watch all that or some of it, um, the microphone issue is solved within the first 11 13 minutes um i've done my best to make it sound as good as i can for the first bit but like i said it'll fix itself after about 11 13 minutes so if you really want to jump on ahead you can do um but a lot of important stuff does happen in those 11 13 minutes but yeah it's up to you but like i said sorry about that but i just thought i'd warn you ahead before the video so then you know what to expect and then normal zoom resumes about 11 13 minutes later okay anyway take it easy have a good one hope you're well and um have a watch have a good one have a good watch or something I don't really know what to say about that. I'll just have a good one anyway. I'll see you around. Hello and welcome back to Angels for Scaly Wings. Let's be going with Neo Rambler. Right then, apparently people are quite pleased that I'm going with the good ending with Anna for the moment anyway, which is good. Um, and several comments have sort of said that I really, really should play this game multiple times to basically explore all the characters we come across in this story because I believe it's the only way to get the true ending and apparently all the characters sort of add up to a great big picture so it's sort of like you know look at the bigger picture type thing and uh, you never know we'll see how it we'll see where we go I mean I, I, I've said before with games where it kind of makes you have to play things again I used to when I was younger do it just for the sake of completionist but the point being is, is again, it's, it's more of a personal experience now that I'm older, and this game is very, very good at trying to uh, involve you as a player, involve you as part of the story. It's very immersive in that way, and therefore I don't particularly want it to ruin the experience we have by then going, right, let's go back and do all this differently, but I don't know, we'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm probably... I'm sort of still on the fence at the moment, I'll be honest with you, but anyway, we'll see how we get along. We'll see. Um, <coughs> I would like to see this true ending anyway. It, it may be that I just sort of see it on YouTube and then comment on it, but that's kind of a lazy way to do it. I'll, but we'll see how we get along. But either way, people are happy that I'm doing the good end with Anna, and people are happy that I went back and found the note under a door while waiting for her on her second date. Technically, first date even, sorry. Uh, in that of this treatment malarkey, which will get explained now that we can press her on this. Um, so yeah, and thankfully none of you guys and girls ever so, uh, sort of hinted at whether my sort of theory about her having cancer or not uh, is correct or not. It's probably absolutely erroneous and it turns out to be something completely different, but even so, you know. Um, so there you go. Um, it could even, perhaps, I was thinking about this now, it could have been linked to Maverick's brother. Maybe that sort of carnivorous thing he became where he was very... Um, uh, aggressive and zombie-like, or not really zombie-like, but cannibalistic-like, might have been a brain tumour of some sort and it caused damage or something. Who knows? I don't know. It could have been that. Um, but anyway, let's put all that aside. We'll find out later. For now, though, we've got a choice of going to the production facility, the police archives, or visit the store. And I have been told it's a good idea, if we want to keep on the good side of Anna, to go to the production facility first. Not necessarily concretely meaning that we get better with Anna or anything, but it's just, you know, since her co-worker's been killed, it might be a good idea to just check on her. Um, so what we're going to do is, uh, I've got the safe file already done, we're going to go to the production facility and uh, see where things are at. What should I do? We'll just wait here. Oh, hello, the Rim. Hey, Neo Rambo. Oh, the Rim, what are you doing here? I'm just fetching some equipment for my roommate. He's in the middle of an experiment and really needs this stuff. He sounds very emotional, which is very unusual for him. It sounds like it's serious. And you're here for an important human business, I bet. Sure. Human business. Getting off with a dragon type business, but human business nonetheless. By the way, how about I invite you to our place sometime? There's another thing you can help me with. Ooh, what is it? I'd like to make some pictures of you. Oh? Okay. I want to use them as references for the humans in my game. I see. Well, I can't promise anything right now, but I'll keep it in mind. Great, thanks. I should really get going before my roommate blows up the apartment. Uh, sure. Take care. You too. Well, this should be the right place. <laughs> How could you not know it was the right place? You've been here several times already, you dork. 
You'll have to forgive me as well, I've got a bit of a virus at the moment, so I'm coughing like a maniac. Hey, Neo Ramble! I didn't even call you about the test yet! We've already discussed that. Oh, you mean the other tests, I see. To what do I owe the honour? I uh, have a few questions about the murder of your colleague. Is that so? Why do you get to go around asking questions like that? Isn't that a matter for human interest? Actually, yes, you could say so. Interesting. What's in it for me? Hey, I already agree to your tests. I'm not sure what else I can offer you apart from my penis. I mean, uh, my, uh, uh, human interests and intellect. Besides, I'm working with the police, so your cooperation would be greatly appreciated. Plus, I might be able to get you a police outfit, and maybe we can do some role-playing later, if you know what I mean. <laughs> God damn it, here, Rami, you're such a perv. Stop it! So, Oh, you're working for our police? Now you really have my attention. I want, to see where you go I want to see where you're going with this, so by all means, go ahead. Right, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. What happened to the last time you saw him alive? Can you tell me what happened when you found him? What was your relationship to him? Don't tell me he was another boyfriend. I don't want to know. He seemed very calm for someone whose colleague was just murdered. Well, let's not keep it personal on that level. Um, relationship with him, we might ask later. Uh, let's, uh, let's just start from the top. What happened the last time you saw him alive? I saw him yesterday evening. There were some tests I needed to run overnight, so instead of staying late to set them up, I had Damien do it. That's what colleagues are for, right? Fair enough. Can you tell me what happened when you found him? I might have left early yesterday, but I made up for it by coming in early today before anyone else. That's why I was the one to find him. I was on my way to my office when I saw him lying in the middle of the hallway in a puddle of his own blood. I don't think she killed him. It'd be a bit weird. Unless she got in early to clean the mess up, but then why call the police, you know, just, just make it up. What was your relationship to him? This is a police question, not a question I'd like to ask on a personal level. We were colleagues, nothing more. I heard that you didn't particularly like him. Yeah, but that's not unusual, I don't like most people. He really didn't like me, though. Why is that? No, I think we haven't really had this conversation before. He was jealous of my success, and it showed. He seemed very calm for someone whose colleague was just murdered. People die every day, it's a simple fact of life. Besides, I don't see you crying about him either. I didn't know him that well, so it's not like someone I actually cared about died. The world stops spinning for no one. Life goes on, and for me that means being without an assistant for a while. Well, it's kind of true, I suppose. That's all. That'll be all. Thank you, Anna. My pleasure. I aim to head back. You interrogated Anna. I <coughs> didn't really gain anything interesting from that, but never mind. Before deciding my next move, I returned to my apartment for a moment of rest. A small piece of paper had been slipped under my door while I was gone. Don't go to the portal, was all it said. I considered the possibility of a hidden message, but that was unlikely. The statement was blunt and quickly scrawled. Someone clearly didn't want me to go to the portal, but why would I go there in the first place? As it was out of order right now, such an action would serve no purpose. I looked outside the window at the portal's faint silhouette in the distance. The paper rustled between my fingers as I fidgeted with it, wondering about the message's sender and significance. <gasps> Perhaps it was Dust saying he didn't die after all at the end of the game. My train of thought was violently interrupted by a sharp burst of gunfire echoing from the portal. Wait, you saw gunfire? Or heard it? I mean, I did hear the gunfire sounds just then, but even so. I had to think fast. Gunshots ensued. Reza's involvement, he was at the portal. The question was why. If this was his attempt to flee back to the human world, he would receive a rather unpleasant surprise the moment he would try to use the portal. Maybe Sebastian's theory was correct and Reza held the part needed to repair the portal, in which case his escape could be imminent. Gunshots themselves were another question. Was someone trying to stop him? The police patrol may have seen him and he may have been taken by surprise. This could be another murder in progress. But all of his murders were committed with a sharp weapon before now, not a gun. He didn't want to be heard. Besides, it was only early evening and the town was still bustling. Reza wanted to stay hidden, he was doing a rather poor job at it. Of course, there was also the possibility that he wanted to be heard, but who would he want to attract? The police? Maverick? It could easily be a trap for those hunting him, and that technically included me, though I wasn't sure if he knew of my involvement in the investigation. There's also a very real possibility that he knew my apartment was close enough to the portal to hear a gunshot. Could it be a signal for me? Regardless, the words I held in my hands were unmistakable. Don't go to the portal. What should I do? Um... Can I... 
can't get out of this, can I? Oh no, hang on. Quick save. No, don't quick save actually, that's a bad idea. I need to pause and save it manually. Hold on. Okay. Um uh, no, hold on. We want no. Done that one. Right, done that. Sorry, again, use the switch controls, I do apologise. <coughs> Um, stay inside and call the police or go to the portal. Um, it says don't go to the portal. So, that gunshot happened. It could be Reza. In which case, why would he be shooting up by the portal? And at the end of the day, I don't think he's personally involved with all these murders. I think there's something else going on. So, stay inside and call the police would be the safest thing to do. Going to the port. Ah, see, going to the port. If we'd stay inside and call the police, we're technically working with Reza if Reza sent the message. But we don't know. We actually don't know. So, you know what? Fuck it. We're going to the port. Fuck this noise. The path I took was a familiar one by now. Even with night falling, it was easy for me to find my way around. Long, grotesque shadows stretched before me, and the atmosphere was eerie and dangerous. I couldn't tell if it was because of the evening shroud of darkness or if the urgent situation tugging at my mind had twisted my perception. I made it past the village border and pressed on. There was still a fair distance to go. Suddenly, gloved hands grabbed me from behind, clamping over my mouth. I couldn't make a sound. From what I could see, it was the same hooded figure I'd met in the maintenance room after the second murder. It's too late. Maverick arrived before you did, and we'll make sure that no one uses the portal today. Don't follow me. So, that was the guy? I don't know. I was shoved to the ground, and before I could regain my composure, the figure vanished into the darkness. If Maverick was still in the area, it was not a good idea to stay here. I wouldn't want to fuel his suspicions or worse. I figured it was time to go back to the police department anyway. So he tried to go to the portal and instead... So maybe the person who's sending us the messages has got to be this hooded figure then. Which may or may not be Reza. And... Uh, apparently Maverick was there. Let's just go back a bit and read that out. It's too late. Maverick arrived before you did, and he'll make sure that no one uses the portal today. So I'm guessing if we went there, Maverick will bust our balls, and that will be that. And at the end of the day, I think this guy's trying to make sure that doesn't happen. I think this guy's subtly trying to help us here with this. Or he's trying to keep us in the loop, but in a sort of... You know, he's got his own plans for us type thing. So, okay. Let's skip all this then. Let's go to the police station then. Alright, fair enough. I think that was the right thing to do, but we'll see. <coughs> there you are, Neo Ramble. It seems to me you've taken a liking to Bryce's chair. Maybe I could get used to this. Don't tell Bryce, though. By the way, we have evidence that Reza visited the portal today. Someone reported loud bangs consistent with what we know about his weapon. We didn't manage to catch him, but I wonder if his stun means he's getting desperate. Who knows? Now let's take a look at what you've got for me. The witness report for manner is good. Nothing new to us, but it's nice to have a statement in writing. Not bad, Neil Ramble. Not bad at all. Thanks for your help. I do what I can. I know, and your help is greatly appreciated, believe me. Especially since we're so short on staff right now. That'll be all for today. I'll contact you if we need anything. Of course. See you next time. See you. We probably could have got something better from the police archives. I'm just going to stick with this for now. So interesting. And also... I mean, I guess we just didn't say anything about us going to the portal then, but... Hmm, interesting. Maverick got there first, though. That's what... Um, that's what bothers me. But, well, no, it doesn't bother me, because we know he's going to do that. I don't really want anything bad to happen to him, though, after what we heard about his past. So, I hope he's alright, even if he gives us shit. Looks like there are some messages in the answering machine. Let's see. Hello, this is Remy speaking. I'm calling in regard to the dinner we talked about. I have an opening soon. I was wondering if yours at the time. Let me know if you're interested. Have a good day. I guess that's my official invitation. And the question is if I want to go or not. It's payday, Neo Ramble. The tests are ready, the machines are ready, the lab is free. Only one more thing is needed to get this party started, and that would be you. So you better bring your body to me, or else I'll have to come get it myself, in which case I won't be able to guarantee your safety. <laughs> I hope you aren't afraid of needles. I'm not, actually. Needles don't bother me that much. She's going to go all out, isn't she? We have two messages waiting for you. Ha! <laughs> Popular! Yay! Um, well, we'll save the game again, but to be honest with you, um, I think, obviously, we want to stick with Anna, so Remy, you're just going to have to take the hit for now. But if we do play the game again, we'll go and date Remy. All right, you know, at the end of the day.
Oh, stupid! Sorry, it's not the controls fault, it's not the game's fault, it's me. I blame the Switch. Stupid Nintendo Switch! Right, anyway, I shall be back in a moment, and then we'll go and pay another visit to Anna. Okay, and we're back. Now, you'll have to forgive me for uh, the just the previous bit of footage there. Unfortunately, my microphone wasn't plugged in correctly, and I've gone and recorded it with my laptop microphone, and therefore my voice quality would have sounded worse than usual, so I apologise for that. It's a good job I did pause it, otherwise I never would have realised that, and we would have had a terrible... Well, worse than terrible commentary recording stuff. Anyway, point being is, is it'll be worse than usual. And it's pretty bad to begin with. Um, but anyway, uh, with that being said and done, I think I've fixed it. Uh, let's go and meet with Anna. There you are. I was wondering if you'd even show up. Well, I'm an honourable person. I wouldn't want to miss an opportunity to meet you. Glutton for punishment, huh? Not that I mind. You haven't seen me play Hyper Dimension Neptune Rebirth 3, have you? Follow me, please. So what ex oh sorry. <clears throat> so what exactly is this room? It's our testing room for research on life subjects. And what exactly do you test here? She just fucking told you it was life subjects. You'll see that soon enough. I intend to use this facility to its fullest potential. Well, you see. Let's start with this one. What's that? I can get a good look at your bone structure, muscle groups, and organs with this. For the finer details, we'll need a different machine. Would you please lie down here? Well, of course. Before we start, can I ask about your qualifications? You can trust me. I'm a doctor. What kind of doctor? Well, Doctor of Pharmacy is the only title I currently hold, but I know how to operate this machinery. Well, that doesn't exactly inspire confidence. You think I'm let an opportunity like this go to waste by not doing my research? I'll have you know that I'm very qualified to perform these tests. If you say so. Now please try not to move too much while this is running. How long will that be? Good question. I suppose we'll see soon enough. <laughs> what do we do now? Just wait until it's over? What do you want me to do? Dance for you so you don't get bored? Oh, I wouldn't mind that. What does a dancing dragon look like anyway? Is that your scientific curiosity shining through? I can approve of that. You didn't answer my question. Well, I'm not going to show you. If you're that curious, you might find the answer in the seedier parts of town. Your town has seedy parts? Oh, there's a lot you haven't seen yet. You know, when I heard that something happened at this facility, I thought it might have been you. It's quite something, isn't it? You know, if I stayed as late as I used to, I might have been. it might have been me instead of Damien. But it's only because you told me not to stay late so often that I wasn't there that night. Ooh, that's a good thing, I guess. Still, somebody died. I'm not crying over that bastard. Alright, you can move again. Does that mean I'm done? That's a good one. <laughs> We're just getting started. What about the results? Don't hold your breath. It'll be processing for some time, and the resulting data will be so vast that I'll probably end up studying it for days. Let's collect some samples now. Where should I start? Wherever you like. Show me your claws. That would be fingernails in my case. I suppose you're right. It would be insulting to call those thin little things of yours claws. They'd probably break off before you can make use of them in any practical way. Just one more way nature gave us the short end of the stick. So which part would be fine for me to cut off? Take a piece from the white part. The rest of you see is attached to the finger. Hold still then. Don't cut off too much. Don't worry, I only need enough to put it under a microscope. There, that wasn't so bad. Do you want me to put a bandage on your little boo-boo? <laughs> I'll show you a boo-boo. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> and what now? Now it'll go right under the microscope. She got up and sat down at the table. Intently, Anna stared at a device. Actually, let's go back and redo that thing again. Huh. Uh. Oh, I can't. Oh, it's a replay, basically. Oh, okay. Fair enough. That's fair enough. It'll go right under the microscope. She got up and sat down at the table. Intently, Anna stared at a device while messing around with the nail clipper. Let's see. Putting your fingernail under a microscope is something we used to do in middle school. Quiet, please. It's a scientist still working. Mm -hmm. Ellipses. This structure looks a lot like keratin. Uh, it's because it is. <laughs> well, that's not much of a surprise, really. Keratin is a substance that forms the claws on its dragons, and most of the animals here. At least as far as mammals, reptiles, and birds are concerned. So why would you retain the structure but not do anything useful with it beyond is is beyond me? It gets better. They grow continuously, so they need to be cut regularly. What happens if you don't cut them? They just keep growing. How much can they keep growing? 
pretty much indefinitely. Do they get thicker at least? Or what else happens when they grow? Well, they just get longer. What a hassle. So how long are you planning on keeping me here? Getting impatient already? I'm just saying our date didn't take all that long and you mentioned you already had days worth of data from that machine. Well, we never specified any terms and I sat out our date until it was officially over. This will certainly go by much quicker if you can show a little patience. Uh, I'll just shut up then. Thank you. By the way, how do you feel about needles? Uh, I don't mind them. <laughs> go ahead and poke me if you need to. No, I don't mind them. Glad to hear that. We'll need to remove some layers for the next part. What are you going to do? These are just some electrodes, and I'll also measure your brain activity with one of those helmets. Oh, I... There you go. Ellipses. What is it now? Uh, eh, nothing. If you say so. This will also take a while. I want to have a good reference and see how your rates change. Your head shape is a little different from ours, but I think this one should do the trick. Perfect. Just as if it was made for you. I'm not so sure about that. By the way, how can you even be sure that your machinery will have no adverse effects on me? I suppose I can't. That is mildly unsettling. Got you such a wimp, Neo. Stop it. Your physiology is similar enough to ours, so there shouldn't be any problems. Let me see. Now I'm going to ask you a few questions. What is this, a polygraph test? No, this is something completely different. I'm also measuring your brain activity here. Besides, I don't really care about the truthfulness of your answers. However, this is to establish your natural highs and lows of the values I'm measuring. Go ahead, then. Let's start with the easy ones. Just say no to the following three questions. It doesn't matter if it's true or not. Understood? Just say no to the following three questions. Uh, no. <laughs> I set myself up for this one, didn't I? <laughs> questions start now. Are you human? No. I see. Is your favourite colour grey? No, even though my name is outlined in grey. Interesting. Have you been convicted of any crime? No. <laughs> I see. <laughs> At least I don't think I have. Now we'll get to the real part. You can answer the following questions however you like. Got it. Did it make you uneasy when you had to answer all the test questions negatively? Um, I suppose so. Yeah, a little bit. I see. Interesting. Have you ever taken a liking to anyone here since you arrived? Yes. I see. Did you have any ulterior motives when you came to our world? Or was it as simple as, we are led to believe? Uh, no, there are no ulterior motives. I see. That's all for this test. You can take off the helmet and I'll take care of the electrodes. This kind of seems like an interrogation. I wanted to keep it simple by asking questions I could get a reaction. I see. It's kind of a shame, because in the end, a lack of additional subjects in this test means that those results might not have been very useful to us. We probably need a few more humans. Then well, why do them in the first place? The data is still useful, just not as useful as it could be. And besides, I did tell you I'd make the most of this room. Well, what's next? I'm not sure yet. Do I want to get close enough to examine uh, mucosa and orifices? Ooh, probably not a good idea. Um, there's only one person in this room who can answer that question. I guess so. <laughs> we quarantined Reza when he initially arrived here, but skipped the procedure when, uh, uh, with you. After examining Reza, we didn't think humans by themselves posed any danger. Nevertheless, who knows what kind of illnesses and bacteria you might be housing as an alternate host? I'm not taking that risk without a full protective suit. Does that mean your procedure are going to get a lot more invasive? No, I'm not in the mood to put the suit on sterilising the whole room. To be fair, I haven't heard of anyone I've been in contact with getting any strange diseases thus far. Sure, but then I'd have to ask you, uh, ask you if any of those actually got close enough to you. As in, intimately close. Ooh, no orifice examinations then. For the next part, we'll actually have to go outside. That sounds like fun. Depends. Here, strap this to your arm. What's this? A handheld monitor. I want to measure how you performed your exercise. Uh, yes ma'am. That's a good little human. Let's go then, shall we? Sure thing. <coughs> See? I'm sarcastic, but I'm also obedient. Uh, no. Or we'll take one lap around the block. I'll be waiting for you here. You can go as fast or as slow as you want, but try not to stop until you're back here. I'll be monitoring you, so I'll know if you try to do anything fishy. Uh, I wouldn't do such a thing. Of course not. The honest and good near Ramble would never do such a thing. There's no need to make fun of me for it. You're such a bleeding heart near Ramble. Anyway, you can start whenever. The monitor should take care of the rest. Trying for a consistent speed, I started with a light jog. Soon, I was outside the gate and around the corner when I met an unexpected surprise. <gasps> oh, hello, Neil Ramble. It's good to see you. What are you doing here? 
Uh, well, I might as well be truthful. I made a bet with Anna, and now I have to do some tests for her. Oh no, why'd you do that? It's a long story. Hope you are careful around her. <laughs> no worries, I am. Is she doing anything weird or painful to you? No, at least not yet. You know, if she tries anything, you can always tell her to stop. If it comes to the worst, your rights as ambassador trump any bar, mets, uh, bar bets you might have made with her. Well, keep that in mind. Thanks. Have you made up your mind about it yet? What do you mean? Our next meeting. Well, I haven't forgotten. I've just been a bit busy with all kinds of things, this included. I'll have to get back to you on that. No problem. Well, I don't want to distract you from what you're doing. Till we meet again. Bye. Well, that could have been awkward. And it was. Afterwards, I finished my lap around the block, arriving only a few minutes after I'd started. I suppose it was too much to ask for a lap without any breaks. Maybe I shouldn't have expected you to be as fit as we are. I got distracted on the way. How so? Did you have to stop and smell some flowers? I met Remy. Oh, Remy? Oh, I wouldn't mind if that bastard kicked the bucket too. Ah, oh, what would you have against him? He's such a self-righteous do-gooder who can't help but stick his nose where it doesn't belong. I don't care what he does, as long as he doesn't mess with me. But if he does mess with me, so do I do care. Oh, but he does mess with me, so I do care. Anyways, I've got your data, so we can head back inside if you're not too exhausted to walk. Of course. Looking at your data, it's kind of hard to evaluate without having any reference points. How much exercise do you usually get? Uh, a little. I see. You sure are going to ask me a lot of questions here. Sorry, missed the voice up. All just part of the tests. Though I think... Those were all the tests I needed to run on you for today. Does that mean we're done here? Oh, some of the data from the scanning machine has been processed. We can look at some pretty pictures of you. <laughs> Unflattering as they may be. <laughs> Why don't you print them out and have them framed? <laughs> I'd rather be looking at some pretty pictures of you instead. <laughs> That's the best you can come up with, seriously. <laughs> Alright, I totally forgot that you were a mammal. To encounter an intelligent mammal of all things. Well, reasonably intelligent at the very least. Why is that so surprising? You already have your myths about humans. Myths are myths. Having you here in the flesh is an entirely different thing. It's not like I could use our myths to get scanned like this one. It just seems so funny to me. Do you notice you're young from your treat uh from your teats as well? Well we do. Let me study your muscle groups for a bit. Do you want me to take my clothes off again? <laughs> I meant the pictures. <laughs> oh I see. You can stay for a bit longer in case I have any questions. Okay. While I continued sitting on the bed, she went up to a table and started looking at the scans of muscle groups. As we talked, her eyes never left the screen. Some of these structures are very similar to those found in Damien's kind. Well, I'm not surprised. His statue is similar enough. True, true. Now shut up and let me concentrate. Does that approach ever work? What are you talking about? You being that rude to everyone? <laughs> Ellipses. We're done here. Get out. You can't take what you dish out of her. Suddenly she got up and looked at Rage across the face. I said, get the heck out of here. She grabbed my arm and roughly walked me to the door. She shoved me outside. She quickly closed the door behind me. Okay. Well, that went well. Looks like I have some free time today. Oh, right, okay. Well, that definitely did not go so well, did it? Hmm. I think what I'll do is I'll just replay that and see if I can get it to end better, but it might be that that's probably how it was supposed to end, and if that's the case, then we'll meet with Remy, I guess. Um, although Lorem might... No, we'll meet with Remy because we did make a dinner date with him. That would only be fair. Um, we should meet with Bryce at some point as well, but I think we'll, we'll do that. So what I'll do is I'll go back and just do that bit again, and we'll see... If anything changes, and if it does, I'll record it. If not, we'll carry on. So back in a moment. Okay, so I did it again, and no, it pretty much ends the same way. Made a couple of changes to my responses, so I was a little less sarcastic and a little less direct with her. But, um, yeah, and uh, basically when I met Remy, I decided to just say, Gotta go, I've got no time for talking. So I could do the lap around the building a bit better, so I got better data. But again, it was only mine, and nothing major happened. So yeah, she's pissed off with us, but never mind, it is what it is. So we'll stick with it for now, and in which case then... I think we better go meet Remy. We said we would, so let's do it. I don't really want to let him down. It'd be unfair. Thank you again for helping me out the other day. Without you, I would have been trapped sorting books for a few more hours. If I do it for dinner, it's the least I could do. It's no problem, really. It's no problem, really. Oh, sorry. It's no problem, really. Besides, I'm also here to learn more about your kind. Spending some time in the library is only appropriate. Well, my gratitude is yours regardless. Anyways, is there anything in particular you would like to eat? Um, <laughs> I could go for some meat <laughs> right now. Uh, let's go with the steak. Oh, you're in luck. I do have a few steaks we can dine upon. This might take a while, so make yourself at home. 
Oh, apparently also in the comments um, when we were in Remy's office, <coughs> it was probably a good idea to look at his notebook, but apparently there was some key information in there that we should have looked at. But again, I don't really want to be snooty, at least on this first playthrough. I want to try and sort of play it my way, which again, you guys and girls in the comments were very good at recognising and sort of uh, accepting of that, which is good. Um, but yeah, if we do decide to do repeat playthroughs, then yeah, we will. Don't you worry about that. Just remind me if I forget, but... Um, like I said, I mean, I was a bit nosy with the computer, which was a bit naughty of me. I was hoping he'd just look at the computer and just sort of look at it on an exterior level, not actually log on, but whatever. Anyway, with those words, Remy walked into the partially walled off kitchen. There was no door, so I saw him open the fridge and take out two steaks before he set them on the counter. Soon after, he was already preparing the various ingredients with a somewhat clumsy pause. He was silent for a moment, then lifted his snout and looked at me from over the partition. What is it? I was just thinking about something. I could help cook if you like. Don't worry about it. I looked around the apartment as Remy cooked and couldn't help but notice the almost mesmerising tidiness that permeated the place. Shelves were filled with books, scrolls, magazines and other various trinkets. Suddenly the rep repetitious noise of vegetables being cut ceased as Remy returned from the adjoining room. I'll be back in just a minute. He went down the hall and vanished through the bathroom door. What should I do? Right, um, I shall save because I think at this point here we don't want to do anything bad to Remy. Um, maybe at a later date, but for now, uh, we can examine the shelves, go into the bathroom, that would be a bit too pervy, look at the pictures, search his bedroom, or escape while I still can. No, don't be stupid. Um, let's just examine the shelves. I moved over to the shelves and idly looked through the books and scrolls. Nothing particularly interesting caught my eye. From the titles alone, it seemed all genres were more or less represented, fiction and non-fiction alike. The scrolls were neatly sorted into holders, though I couldn't make out the logical consistency behind their arrangement. Another me, huh? Let's check that out. Okay. Not quite sure what I expected. I don't really know what that's all about anyway. It must be dragon related. There might be something pervy going on there. It looks like a human ear on the right hand side. Who knows? Uh, look at the pictures. I picked up one of the framed photos to examine it more closely. It was a red dragon. I guess it was a female of young adult or college age, but I wasn't sure as it was still hard to tell without looking at the obvious signs. It was probably his gay best friend, and he was gay with him. Her crimson scaled head was adorned with frills that ran down the back of her neck. She wasn't familiar to me. I see. Um, can I look at the pictures again? The second picture showed Remy in his typical attire, tie, glasses and all. Interesting. The bathroom door opened and revealed the white dragon. As he approached, I felt my stomach grumble quietly. I barely heard the muffled sound, but when I saw Remy's ears perk, I realised he had more sensitive ears than I expected. Hungry already, I take it. Uh, <laughs> lift your shirt. I suppose so. Although your stomach already answered that question for you. After entering the kitchen once more, I saw the dragon looked over the kitchen partition again. His mouth opened a little as though he was going to speak, but his brow scrunched with hesitation. Before I could say anything, he shook his head and continued to cook. Soon I heard the sizzling of frying meat as the delicious smell of steak wafted into the room. Fueled by its fragrant odour, I slowly lost myself to daydreams as I closed my eyes. What kind of daydreams? There's something wrong. You are salivating. Uh, it's nothing. I was just thinking about something. Oh, Anna, you sadistic bitch. You, I so want you in my bed. Well, the food is ready. Enjoy. I looked down and saw that a plate was already in front of me, piled with steak and vegetables. Remy was already eating, so I took the knife he had provided and cut off a small corner of the steak. Then I pierced it with the fork, its three prongs penetrating the flesh unrelentingly. Do we really need narrative description of us eating steak? Slowly I raised it to my mouth, and my tongue glided over the bare substance briefly as it entered my lips. Damn, this is turning into a homoerotic thing now, isn't it? I took the first bite, a delicately crisp exterior with a much softer and juicy inside. God damn it. Why couldn't this be with Anna? I know she's frustrated, but still. It melted on my tongue like butter. Oh, God damn it. As the taste spread to even the remotest corner of my mouth. Okay, it's a good steak. Get over it. It was almost perfect. So what were you thinking about? Huh? Remy's words snapped me back to reality. You said you were thinking about something. Um... Um... Uh, I don't really want to talk about work. I think we need to relax a little bit. Um, let, let's just stick to the obvious here. I looked at some of your scrolls. Which ones? The ones on anatomy. Well, well, I do have a variety of books and scrolls covering all kinds of different subjects. I saw as much. You may have heard that I have a degree in biology, which is one of the reasons I was given the honour of coming here in the first place. As such, your anatomy is of high interest to me and one of the things I'm supposed to study. 
my anatomy? I was talking about your kind in general, not you in particular, you doofus. Oh, well, well in that case, I might be able to find you something more comprehensive than a handful of scrolls. I'd greatly appreciate that, thank you. Um... Let's, let's, let's keep it sort of light for the moment. Why did you use a, a stove to cook? Why did you use a stove to cook? I mean, can't you just use your fire? Well, for one, not all of us have that ability. Besides, we still appreciate the convenience that comes with appliances like this one, and not everyone wants to eat food cooked with someone else's breath. <coughs> Breathing fire indoors is also a little unsafe. I see. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Right, okay, let's uh, ask him the uh, a, little, a little more intimate question. Um, do you live here by yourself? I do. Honestly, you're the first person to visit in a while. He spoke softly, and his gaze wandered. Oh, I see. Well, thank you again for inviting me. Um, I don't want to talk about Mera, and I don't... I suppose we could talk about the murders, I guess. It might bring the mood down a bit, but... Um, eh, it means that we're trying to keep things platonic. Oh, what a terrible thing. People can be so cruel sometimes. They can be. Where I come from, incidences like this are unfortunately fairly common. Truly? Here, it is almost unheard of. One just needs to take a look at the statistics to realise that this is very unusual. Or just an exceptionally bad week. Nothing in particular. Anyways, how do you like the food? Um, it is delicious. Thank you. Suppose you'd learn to cook as well when you live on your own long enough. Um, mention that you saw him with Anna or say nothing. Ooh. Did we see him with Anna? I can't remember now. She doesn't like him very much. I don't particularly... Well, see, this could go south. I, I know our priority is Anna, at least with me at the moment. But, um... I don't know. Then again, it could lead to a, like a healing of relations. But knowing Anna, that's probably not going to happen. I don't know. <sighs> it's going to be tough. Um, I suppose then talking about it might make him feel a bit better if we do it right. So, yeah, it's, it's a little less awkward. Like, well, both are awkward. But let's let's uh, let, let's just get down. Let's get down to breast tags. By the way, I noticed you went to see Anna the other day. What was all that about? How do you know about that? Well, I saw you two together a little bit before you left the building. That's kind of a long story. Why were you at the facility in the first place? She said I could come by. Apparently she wants to run some tests on me. Oh, that is just so typical of her. Let me tell you something, that woman is trouble. Big trouble. A few years ago she was discovered performing unapproved and therefore illegal experiments. She had been running them for a while under the assumption that she would be allowed to, but in the end our council's ethics committee made the decision against her. Anna's defence was that she did it for the greater good, and that she was confident that her experiments would be approved eventually. She lambasted us for not allowing her research and said our decision was short-sighted and stifling innovation. In the end, no proof of any actual wrongdoing could be found, so she basically got off scot-free. Since then, she's remained under the radar. Until now, there are rumours going around about Anna. Surprise, surprise, the latest application involves human DNA. Oh, she's trying to create the T-virus. Dun -dun -dun! That makes sense. A casual disregard for rules of any... Oh, no, no, obviously she says she's doing it for cancer research. But then again, supposedly, when they were doing the viruses in the Resident Evil universe, the original plan for one of the founders of Umbrella was to do it for medicinal research, and then he died, either maliciously or natural causes, and then the other two partners were like, let's make weapons of evil and zombies! And, yeah, you know where that went. A casual disregard for rules of any kind to tell you what kind of person she is. Yeah, she's cool and she's hot and she's sexy, I like it. She does have a brilliant mind, you know, but the way she uses it... I know, it's vicious and it's... Oh, it's so hot. I mean, <clears throat> she's manipulative, arrogant, uh, arrogant, abusive. I don't think you should trust her. Uh, maybe she isn't as bad as you say. You don't know her, nor should you bother getting to know her. How much do you really know about Anna? Is it your job to go knocking on people's doors just because you heard some rumours? I was just trying to help. Really? It sounds like all you did was harass her. Without proof of any actual wrongdoing, that's not a particularly good idea. Well, I... Well, if that's what you think, then I just hope you at least be careful around her. Soon both of our plates were picked clean. I guess I'll just your portion correctly, unless you want more. I'm good, thanks. That was an interesting steak. What kind of meat was that? Human meat. Those were orc steaks. Are you familiar with that animal? We may have heard of orcs before. They are rather large bovine mammals characterised by the horns and body shape. We get a range of products from them, from meat and milk to sub-products like butter and cheese, in addition to leather, felt, oils and creams. We even use their horns and bones for a variety of things. That sounds similar to an animal we have back at home. Speaking of unfamiliar creatures, why don't you tell me more about your species? 
Are you referring to me or all of us? Our society is composed of a number of different species, which you have probably noticed by now. I guess all of you. Let's start with the basics. I'm sure you're aware, but unlike the mammalian aurochs, we are reptiles. Though this makes me wonder about you. Based on your fur, I'd guess that you are a mammal, but you're very different from other mammals we know. In the same vein, you don't share many characteristics with our reptiles back home. And by the way, we don't have fur, but hair. Oh, what's the difference? Uh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> fur has a set length, whereas hair will keep growing. Fur is more dense than hair. Um, <coughs> I'm not sure, actually. <coughs> Um, fur has a set length? I guess it does, I suppose. But then so does hair? Oh, hair does grow, keep growing. Yeah, I'll, I'll say the second one. Uh, it's, it's only a guess because I'm not a biologist, I'm a physicist, so I really don't know. Fur has a set length it will grow, whereas hair will keep growing, so we regularly cut it. Is that so? Interesting. I was wondering something, are you wearing all this coverings to make up for a lack of hair? I suppose that's one reason why humans wear clothes. They also provide warmth and protection and are used to differentiate us from one another. Sometimes uniforms are used as identification, other times clothes are just ornamental. What a person wears can tell us something about the person itself. That sounds complicated. We also have uniforms and wear some things for ornamental reasons, though our uses aren't quite as extensive. That brings up an interesting question. Are you endo or exothermic? We produce our own body heat. That is unusual. Where I come from, all reptiles are exothermic. Unless you count birds as reptiles, I guess. But none of your reptiles are sentient, correct? Maybe it's something to do with our different brain structures. Maybe. Now that you've been in our world for a while, how'd you like it here? Um, I like the people. They rule. Yeah, they're much friendlier. Well, it's good to hear. Cultural differences can make things very difficult sometimes, even within the same species. Glad things are working out for you so far. Oh, I just remembered. I was able to save my game after all. Your interference was only a minor setback. Hooray! Uh... Good job, Remy. You're awesome. No, glad to hear it. I really am glad to hear it. I was quite relieved when I found out. You know, if that hadn't worked out so well, I would have had to consider making you play up to that point again for me. You know what, Remy? I'd have done it for your old buddy just because I don't like interrupting somebody else's game. Uh, I wouldn't mind playing some of your video games. Don't be stupid. Is that so? Yeah, they're fun. I'd like to see what kinds of games you have here. I'll keep that in mind. Perhaps I can show you sometime. You know, I'm glad you're here. Since you arrived in our world, we haven't really had the chance to just sit down and talk. Um, I agree. It's It's been a busy time for me, as you can imagine. Oh, of course. Thanks for taking the time to pay me a visit. I always have so many things to take care of that it's hard for me to find the time to do something simple like this. At least it worked out this time. You do have a point, though. I don't really know that much about you. I know where you work, but most of our conversations so far have revolved around things other than you and me. There is a reason for that, Neo. You may be pointing in the homosexual direction, but I'm not, okay? I've got strict instructions for you, boy. Don't cock it up. After we've done a playthrough and I decide to play it again, then I will let you have your fun. But not now. Why don't you tell me more about yourself? <coughs> Excuse me. Again, sorry for the coughs. I do apologise. Uh, I don't really like talking about myself. Why not? I guess I wouldn't know what to say, I'm not really that interesting. Ha! You and me both, buddy! I don't believe you. There's also the uncertainty of not knowing how another person will react to something I say. I don't want to embarrass myself. Hey, at least you told me that. That's something. I suppose. Anyway, now that you've seen my apartment, I'm wondering what your home on the other side of the portal looks like. Uh, it's nothing special. Yours is prettier. Actually, everything here looks nice in comparison to back home. Is that so? Well, in some ways, I'm not really looking forward to returning, but it's not like I have a choice in the matter. I suppose you could always visit if you wanted to. It wouldn't be that easy, I'm afraid. There was an extensive process involved in selecting who would go through the portal, and I was only one of many applicants. I'm still surprised that I ended up being chosen. At least you're here now. Indeed. So what have you been up to since the last time I saw you? You mean since I went into the kitchen to cook steaks? <laughs> Very funny. I'm just messing with you, Neo Ramble. Oh, with all the talking, I totally forgot about dessert. Oh! Oh, I'm up for some dessert. I like dessert. Then I'll just have the right thing for you. I'll be just a minute. Unless he comes in, like, squirting himself with cream and put cherries on his private bits with cream on top. Then, yeah, all the other way around, cream and then cherries on top. That could be a bit awkward, but, um, eh. Can't pass up free cream and cherries, I guess. He neatly slacked our dishes before he took them into his uh, took them into one of his four paws and went back into the kitchen using his other three limbs. I couldn't help but think that it looked pretty awkward. 
When he returned balancing a plate with a rather attractive cake slice in a similar manner, I realised that he would have had to make multiple trips to carry everything to the table. Um, uh, if I help him, it's a bit too involved, but let's just ask. Do you need any help with that? Ah, oh, don't worry about it. I can handle it. You're my guess after all. See? Be polite, but not intrusive. Once he placed the first cake slice on the table, he went back to fetch the other. When he approached the table the second time, though, one of the tiny desert fruits started to slip off the plate. Remy reached with his free forepaw to it in his attempt to save it, but lost balance without support and fell over. In an instant, the plate, fork, and cake slice flew through the air. The dished silverware clattered as the pristine cake crumbled into a sad heap on the floor. Oh, Oh, that is so sad. Poor bloke. Don't worry about it, chum. For a few moments, there was silence as Remy and I looked at the result of his blunder. I know he thought he was a stupid man. I'm sorry, Neo Rumble. <laughs> I'll just eat your slice instead. <laughs> you don't need to apologise. This just isn't about you and your cake. This always happens to me no matter how hard I try. You have proper hands, so do some of the other species. How can someone like me even be a librarian? Not a day goes by without me dropping a scroll and unfurling it across the room. Uh-oh, he's got depression issues. Well, okay, time to bring out the good, comforting, uh, empathetic... Oh, oh, the listening... Shit, I'm crap at this. Uh, drink more beer and hope for the best. But the customers don't care, or pity me too much to say anything. It's a common sight for them, after all. This is about a mirror, isn't it? I guess it is. I just don't see why someone like me got to be a librarian when there were others more qualified for the position. Or at least capable of not dropping the inventory on a daily basis. She makes fun of you for it. I knew it. I mean, why else would she have me do all these tasks all the time? Sorting books, carrying things from one place to another? I shouldn't be doing that. I should be working somewhere where my worth is only in the entertainment I provide. Well, why don't you look for a new job? These positions have terms similar to those of ministers. If I ended my employment prema uh, prematurely, it wouldn't look great. Well, how long do you have left? A while. Uh... <laughs> you should resign consequences, be damned. Do you know what? That's the kind of attitude I've had lately. And at the end of the day, yeah, it's about just standing up for yourself. So yeah, fuck it. Let's do it. I'm not trying to destroy his life or anything. I'm just saying, you've got to stand up for yourself, bro. That's easier said than done, but maybe I should consider it. I just wanted to have a nice evening with you. Now it ended up like this, I shouldn't have brought that up. Don't worry about it. I still think it was a nice evening. Maybe I should stop being such a sourpuss then. I can help you clean up. Thank you, Nia Rumble. Yeah, why not? I'd help you clean up, old chum. Don't be silly. We cleaned up together, and by the end, he seemed to be in high spirits. Afterwards, we said our goodbyes, and I left. Not sure what to think. No, no, no that was fair enough. I think that went as well as expected. And to be fair, he's grown a few balls, so... Oh. Oh. Loss and superstition. So, that's not good. That's either Anna or LD there. Hmm. For the passion thing, though, we didn't get to have sex with the dragon, though, did we? That was boring. Stupid chaps are letting me down. <laughs> Never mind. Hmm. I awoke with my eyes fixed on the ceiling wallpaper. A sense of dread lingered from a nightmare and no longer remembered. How many more times would I see this apartment before I returned to my own world? Or before something happened to me? I got ready for the day and tried to shake off those thoughts. Bing bong! Is it Seb again? Yep, thought so. Hey dear Ramble! And right on the minute, you showed up at this time every day like clockwork. Clocks are reliable, and reliable is good in this line of work. I think you can guess why I'm here. Oh god, not another one! Is it Rezzer again? What happened this time? Chief will explain everything once we get there. Let's not keep him waiting, shall we? Oh, it's another death. Oh, no, this is not good. This is not good. We arrived at a place that would, like, uh, that would have looked like an ordinary house had it not been for its extraordinary size. It reminded me more of a hostel than a family home. Chief! There you are. Wait, weren't you supposed to be with Amira? Luckily, she doesn't work every day of the week. Oh, I see. Anyway... We're nearly done here, so let's keep it short. Where's it broke into the hatchery? There was another murder victim. An employee of the hatchery was on night duty. Her body was found quite away from here. There's evidence of a struggle, but she covered a lot of distance before it was ultimately over. Loud bangs were heard from the area her body was found, and she has numerous wounds consistent with both the wounds from previous victims and that other weapon he has. By this point, news of another corpse didn't have the same impact anymore. It was just another one of Reza's faceless victims. How do we know it's Reza? Somebody could have taken his gun. The hatchery... Is that what this building is? Well, not only. It's a council-owned building and they keep everything related to this 
se their sector under the same roof. That was a difficult sentence to say out. So besides the hatchery, there's also an orphanage and a family clinic inside. There are also offices related to the administration of those services. Well, that reminds me of the production facility. It should. They have a similar management structure. Can we get back to the case? Sorry for the interruption, Chief. Wait a minute. If an orphanage is in there, too... There are no other casualties. But Reza got something else when he broke in. A generator. As well as a few eggs. Luckily, the power was restored before anything happened to all the other eggs left inside. But needless to say, the parents of the stolen eggs are not going to be happy. Well, why would he steal eggs in the first place? Maybe you can tell us. That's why you're here, after all. I don't know. I have no idea what he'd even want to do with them. Maybe he wants to use them as a bargaining chip. After all, he still has to make his escape and the portal is still broken. Do you think he wants to exchange them for safe passage through the portal? Maybe. It's still broken, though, so I'm not sure if that would be much help. Maybe he has the part needs to repair it and now he has everything he needs to escape. You could trade the eggs for safe passage, fix the portal and leave. Well, that's not the only possibility. He may not be the one who broke the portal. Maybe he thinks you intentionally sabotaged it so he can't leave and he feels he needs the eggs' bargaining chip to get you to repair it. If he just wanted to leave, I feel like he could have done that already. That's some good thinking there, Neo. It doesn't matter who sabotaged the portal. We only know that Reza's actions are becoming more and more desperate. He kidnapped defenseless eggs and even used a human weapon. Something clearly going on with him. Maybe it means he'll slip up soon. Who knows, maybe he already has. In any case, we're done here. Let's head back to the department and decide what to do next. Hopefully some of the test results will tell us something. Yeah, but who was the murder victim? Was it just some random dragon or what? After a brief walk, we're in Bryce's office again. Initial test results had already come in, but didn't reveal any insightful or new information. So what do we do now? Go over the timeline again? Not yet. There are a few things I'd like to take care of first. Would you ever mind? Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. Come in. Oh, this is gonna get nasty. Maverick, what are you doing here? Chief, can I talk to you? Alone. I'm quite busy here, Maverick. What is it about? Reza. Well, you're looking at the Reza Task Force. If you have anything to say, you can say it in front of all of us. I see. I think I know where Reza is. You know where Reza is at this very moment? I have good reason to believe that I've located his hideout. <sighs> he could still be there or he might have already moved on. Damn, Maverick, tell me everything. I've been tracking him for a while now. When he was at the portal a few days ago, I nearly got him and managed to follow him for a while before I lost him. <sighs> Based on that, when he's been where he's been and his victims have been found, I could triangulate his whereabouts. He has to live somewhere, right? He needs a base to hide the generators and everything he has stolen. Bryce cleared the clutter on the table and smoothed out a map of town on its surface. It already had a few locations related to the case marked on it. <coughs> Show it to me. Prior victims were found here and here. Today's was here. She was following him, likely because she wanted to take the eggs he stole. This is the path he took from the portal I followed him a few days ago. <coughs> so we have established this as his area of operation. Extrapolate it, and we can narrow it down to this. Now where could he be hiding in this area? He's certainly not within the village borders. <coughs> So unless he's decided to live in the wilderness or in a hole in the ground, the only option is here. Under a cardboard box. <sighs> the abandoned farm. When did you figure all this out? Just a few minutes ago. When I did, I immediately came here. Damn it, Maverick, this might be it. Should we send an observation team? As if we had one to spare. Heck, we're going there right now. What about you, Maverick? I'm still on sick leave, remember? Besides, if I saw Reza right now, I'd probably do something I shouldn't. How about you, Neo Ramble? Isn't this going to be dangerous? Reza probably wouldn't harm you, as you're the only person he could possibly consider an ally. Good point. If anything, with you there, we might be able to convince him to give up, or we could act like we intend to trade you for the eggs if he tries to use them as a bargaining chip. You're not really going to use me as ransom, right? We'll see about that. Well, if I suppose it's necessary, I'll have to play along. I've got your back. If there's one thing we can do to make this whole situation even worse, we be messing up with you. We have the element of surprise if we walk into his base right now, but we'll risk risk lashing out, uh, lashing out with his weapon. If we want to resolve this peacefully, observation is probably the way to go. I guess we won't need Rio Ramble for there for that, though. True enough. All right, Neo Ramble, you stay here and wait for further instructions. We may need you at a moment's notice. Don't do anything without us telling you to, understand? Okay. All right, then. Let's go, Seb. After you, Chief. Maverick. Good job. Thanks, Chief. Shortly after they vanish, Maverick also turned to leave. Then I had to wait. Bryce and Sebastian were observing the farm now. If anything new happened, I would be the first to know. I spent some time looking around Bryce's office, studying all the material he had gathered about the case, though there wasn't any information I didn't already know. After a few hours, the telephone in his office rang. I'm not sure whether the call was intended to be for Bryce or not. I picked it up. You ramble. 
Yes? I think you need to come here. I'll give you the directions. No problem. Why do you sound like Maverick? Uh, he's cool. Okay. There you are. So what happened? A whole lot of nothing. There was no movement tool from the building at the time we've been watching. He usually operates during the night, so maybe he's just asleep? In that case, it would be best for us to go in before he has a chance to make his escape. Maybe he's not even there anymore. He could have seen us and slipped away unnoticed. We've plenty of time to destroy the evidence while we've been waiting here. You're right. Either he's still inside or he's already gone and not coming back. Let's go in. What should I do? You're coming with me. Sebastian, you walk around and watch the back of the building just in case he tries to escape. I'm on it, Chief. I'll go in. And you stay here, alright? What am I even here for, then? Your insurance. If Professor tries to fill in and sees you, he might throw him off. You might be able to stop him. But if we get into a standoff, I can tell him you're here as well. I just don't want you to come inside before where it could be dangerous. It could be dangerous out here, you asshat! Um... Let me go in first, or all right. Um... Nah, let's, let's just agree with Bryce's plan for now. Actually, I should save actually at this point, just in case. Um, I think somebody's going to die here and it's not going to be pretty. But let's let's follow Bryce's advice for now. I don't really want to upset his boat. It is, at the end of the day, we are in his world and it is his... Well, it's not really his case anymore, but... it's been it, He's been on the case from the start and I kind of feel like it is. And I think even Maverick would rather we let we follow his orders. Alright then, Chief. I watched as Bryce made his way to the front door. Looking around, I scanned the windows of the building for any sign of movement. When Bryce reached the door, I wondered how he would make his entry. Would he try to be quiet and sneak around, hoping to find Reza prepared? Or would he barge in and rely on his strength and speed to apprehend him? Though, shortly after Bryce opened the door, an earth-shattering sound echoed across the sky! Oh, it was a bomb. Bryce! I don't think he would have... Unless that blip... No, please don't be Bryce dead. No! No! No, right, okay, bollocks to that. It's probably, like, inevitable. And it'll probably be that we die first, but shit. Alright, let's see what happens then. Oh, no, no, Bryce is not dead, no. I'll go first. Why? Maybe I can talk with him and can figure things out. I don't think he wants to kill me, so even if it doesn't work out, Sebastian and you will still be nearby to catch him. I'll be right behind you then. Do be careful. Hey, what? Error. Corruption found. Changing the timeline were not possible after reloading. What? Please do not alter timelines or rapid cessation. This may cause corruptions to occur. I bloody knew it. The system's doing that whole fucking doki doki literature cub shit, isn't it? Exercise caution balls have confidence in choices you make. Fuck you, game. That is bullshit. Why couldn't I... Wait. No, 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 no. I'll risk corruption if I have to. Bollocks to it. What? Ah, oh, shit. I guess that's the game's way of kind of forcing you to stick with the, um... Uh, stick with your choices, I guess. Uh, well, I'll we'll give the game credit. If the problem persists, please start a new timeline to alter the outcome. Wow! Reloading unrelated save files before you get to this point again may cause your progress in this matter to be erased, which means that you will have to start over again if you wish to change this outcome. It might be easier just to accept this outcome and move on for now. Shit. See, now I don't know whether the game is messing with me or not. Oh, man. I'm guessing... Bollocks, man. It might be easier to just accept this outcome and move on for now. Why would the game do that? See, now I don't know. I really want to ch I really want to test the system. If the system corrupts all my game files, I'd have to start everything all over again. And we've come quite far. I mean, to be fair, I could just watch my videos back and just do that, but... Fuck. See, that's... This is it. I don't know if this is a meta thing or not. Um... 
All right, I'll tell you what. Let, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole thing because I think people would be pissed. Oh, I just, I just, fuck, I don't. No, 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 no. All right, we'll, 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 I will play along. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be brave and play along. Let, let, yeah. Okay, he's dead. Fair enough. Fair enough. I will. I'll play along. I'll play along then. And we'll see what happens. I'm not happy about that, but at the same time, I can get why the game's done it, and it's again trying to teach you about consequence, or it could be bluffing. That's what I don't understand. That's weird. I don't know. Right, we'll stick. We'll stick with the choice then for now. And then you guys and girls can comment on the in the section for me. Don't spoil anything, but just say. No, what would I ask you to say? Oh, I don't know. Oh, that's pissed me off, man. See, would I would I do that and change it? No, we did. No, I'm not going to change it. No, because we did as we were told, and that's that. No, fuck it. I did as I was told. We've got to accept some consequences. Let's leave it at that. Fair enough, game. <coughs> I'll play by your rules. <coughs> All right, no, fuck it. Let's let's just do it. I can't believe he's really gone. Ellipses. I'm sorry, Neo Ramble. I just don't know what to say. Ellipses. Ellipses. All the responsibility falls on me now. Res is still out there somewhere. The case is just beyond our capabilities. We're already at a bare minimum before this. But with Bryce gone, I just don't know what we should do now. I've already requested help from one of the cities. I hope they'll send some good investigators on our way as soon as possible. At least we reclaimed everything that was stolen, well, except for the eggs. I don't have to explain to the parents how the children were killed in that explosion. Oh shit, were they? <coughs> Or well, maybe, I don't know. All of the generators were just sitting inside there. It makes me think that Resin must have left in a hurry. He was obviously using it as a bomb, I guess. And we got so close too. It was his hideout for crying out loud. He probably just saw us approaching left behind and left before we even had the chance to apprehend him. It could have been Maverick, maybe he'd done all this, but then why? Why would he do that? But you know what? We can't stop now. If anything, this has only proven that he's even more dangerous than we thought. Reza can make bombs out of generators who say he won't uh, where he'll use them next. We have to stop him near Ramble. Are you with me? Yes. Regardless of Bryce's death, we have to try our best to proceed with the investigation for his memory and for the sake of the town. At least Reza doesn't have any generators for now. All of the stolen ones were accounted for inside the building. Alright, let me see what else we have. When we searched the building, we found out that the things Reza stole, we also found this, this bloody bandage. Do you think that's his? That's what we need to find out. But given that all we know, it probably is. So he's wounded. Well, we know he was injured during the fight with his first victim, but whether this is from the same wound or something else, I'm not sure. In any case, you could bring it to the lab for us to find out more. Sure. Next, we have a witness who reported hearing loud bangs during the night. We'd like to send someone to make a follow-up visit. You'll need to confirm the witness statement and see if it has anything new to share. Uh, anything new to share. Also, now that we have reclaimed your PDAs. Oh, okay, fair enough. We're going to send one of the archives uh, for analysis, since they have experience with human artifacts that are better suited to do it than any of our departments. No problem. In any case, I'll just leave everything here until I get to it. So feel free to do these tasks as you wish. I know it's laughable that we don't even have a free hand for simple errands. Don't worry about it. Anyways, we should get back to the investigation now. I'll leave the stuff for you here, and I'll take care of the rest once I get back, alright? Sure thing. Good luck, Neo Ramble. You too, Seb. Next time, I'm going in first. <laughs> right, well that really has shook things up. Again, I'm really enjoying this game. I like, I like the story. I think this is a great, interesting mystery. I like the fact that it's gone this way. And I know you could argue it's cliched, it's not 100% original or anything, but it's done so well. And I've said before in the past, I don't care if something's cliched or not, as long as it's done well. It can be as cliched as you want. It could have been done many times before, but as long as it's done well enough that you enjoy it, that's all that matters. And this is really good fun. What's bothering me is the system doing that. And I like that, because I don't know if the system was going to... I really wanted to call the system's bluff, but then I somehow think it probably would have done. I don't know. But anyway, I think we should live with the decision that Bryce is now dead. But I'm curious about the system now. This is what's bothering me. Who is the system? The system... I, I, just, I know, I think somebody said in the comments the system is is a mechanic, I think. I think they said it was a mechanic. I can't remember in the comment section what they specifically said. Uh, I just kind of gloss, glossed over it because I thought when I looked at what they was being said, I was like, oh, okay, it's not that important then. But now I'm starting to think that it is. I could be overthinking it again. That's what I tend to do, though. Ah, fuck, man. But this is good. I'm really enjoying this. This is a great game, by the way. I'm really enjoying this. This is a wonderful story and a wonderful adventure, and I'm really loving it. I, 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 I think 
the last sort of game I played that was like this um, was Snatcher. I, I used to have a copy of Snatcher on the Mega CD. I had the Sega Mega CD. Um, and I fucking love that game. That is in uh, that's in one of my top five best games of all time. And that is just a text adventure, but it's a bloody good one. You know, it's 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 a brilliant fusion of, uh, of uh, Terminator and uh, Blade Runner. And uh, apart from the ending, which does get a bit waffly, it's still really good. I really enjoyed Snatcher. It was a fantastic experience. And this is starting to have a similar feel to it. Not in terms of the same genre or anything, but in terms of the involvement and immersiveness, it's getting that feeling again. It's good. So, um, yeah, I like it. But okay, fair enough. Um, well, we'll carry on for a bit longer then. Uh, let's see. Take the banished facility, visit the witness, take the PDA to the library. I think we should go visit the witness first. Let's, let's do that. Don't want to get that, that, you know, at the end of the day, it's important we get their statement. Can I help you? You must be Ipsum. Is that right? Sure. I'm working with the police and hope you can answer a few questions. Because I responded to your call for witnesses about last night, right? Yes. Alright, what do you want to know? Can you tell me what happened? Sure. I was running from an experiment in my home labor uh, laboratory and waiting for it to finish. Around 2 a.m. I suddenly heard a few bangs outside. They reminded me of small explosions. It sounded like they were coming from just around the corner. I see. Did nothing about this seem unusual to you? See, I'm trying to be a bit more confident and police-like now. Not really. Well, I know, of course, a few similar disturbances with my experiments before. If someone else decided to take up home experimentation, they certainly have my approval. Besides, I wasn't in any position to abandon the experiment that was running at the time, or else it could have had a similar outcome. Thank you. I think that will be all. No problem. So, 2am, explosions going off. So, yeah, not really that useful, but whatever's. Take the banish to the facility. We haven't got a blood sample of Reza, so I, I really don't think that's going to be helpful. I suppose going there to see Anna would be important, but I think we'll leave it for now. I think we should take the PDA to the library. Let's let, let's let's think bigger here. Doesn't look like Remy's here. Whoa, that's one heck of a dragon. Excuse me, can I help you? Do you know where the audio section is? Well, I'm looking for some sheet music. Uh, sorry, I have no idea. I don't even work here. Ah, uh, don't worry about it. The staff all seem to be hiding somewhere. Anyway, have a good day. You too. I like your bow tie. Maybe Remy is somewhere in the back or in his office. Hello? You know, this section is usually for staff only. Well, I'm just looking for Remy. I'm supposed to drop off this PDA. Well, he's not working today. Apparently he has other engagements. Oh shit, because we told him to uh, stand up and resign. <laughs> we might have fucked that up actually, thinking about it. Oh yeah. Oh dear. Ah, oh, fuck it. We'll, we'll manage it. If you need to find him, you probably do so at his home. Well, can I just leave the PDA here? Oh, I'm not going to take responsibility for this. If you get lost, if you want to drop it off, go find him. Alright, okay. By the way, I hope you do not take it personally and I'll try to send you away. To be honest, I'm glad you're still here. Remember I said I believed you when you told me your side of the story. I always have to do what's in the public's best interests, and now that they will not blame me if you have any connection with Reza, I hope you can understand that. Here's Remy's address, in case you need it. Thank you. No, to be fair to her, yeah, she's protecting the public. I totally agree. Except that, that's fine. Oh, hello, Nate Ramble. What are you doing here? Well, he just came by to give you this. I was already at the library, but Amira refused to let me drop it off there. I see. Hey, it's one of your PDAs. I told you one would find his way to me eventually. Yep, I know you can look at it and all the human knowledge you want. You have no idea how much I'm looking forward to that. I may not be working today, but I'm still going to check it out as soon as possible. I'm just going to leave it to you then. Thanks. Enjoy! Okay, I think that was a good thing to do. Thanks for all your help. I'll take care of the remaining tasks so you can take the rest of the day off. I'm sure you have things to do other than help in the police department. It's no problem, really. My trip to your world wasn't supposed to be a vacation. Alright then, I'll see you next time. See you! Don't have a price, damn it. <laughs> Never even had a chance to meet him or see him, so I suppose in a way his death isn't really that bad because it's bad for the investigation, but we never saw him on a personal level, so yeah. Never mind. After this fateful day, I was glad to see, uh, finally have some sort of respite. I wandered into the kitchen as I considered tonight's dinner. Shall I cook something or order out? When I returned to the living room, I suddenly found my strength leaving me and collapsed to the floor. I'm not surprised, man. I'm not surprised at all. Oh. Oh, that's not good. The next thing I saw was a blurry stone ceiling. As my eyes slowly returned, I managed to sit up. 
I was in a cave, and before me stood a familiar, mysterious face. I apologise for the violence, but I can assure you it was the easiest way. Where am I? Is this your hideout? Just a temporary accommodation so we can be undisturbed for this meeting. Someone else used to live here until recently. Do you know who I am? Well, you're not Reza. Good. What did it take for you to figure that out? Since you're not whispering anymore, I can hear it clearly in your voice. I had a feeling that you couldn't be him since the first time we met, though. Which first time are you talking about? The generator in the cellar when you pushed me. I see. You can call me the Administrator. No, the humans are supposed to be here, though. I assume that's why you're wearing the mask? You don't want to be recognised? That is correct. Whoever you are, you also saved my life. Did you? Oh yeah, you did, because the generator, uh, the thing fell from the ceiling when we were in the in the place without the generator, and then he stopped us going to the portal, didn't he, because of what was going on. So he did. Yes, that's actually very true. On more than one occasion. Your presence here doesn't make any sense. You couldn't have come through the portal. The dragons would have noticed. This is where you are wrong. My arrival through the portal is what led the dragons to discover it in the first place. Is that so? When I crawled out from the hole in the earth that hit the portal, there would be no guards to discover me. My parents exposed the portal, but the dragons didn't know it was there yet. So you arrived even before Reza. <coughs> that makes you the actual first human to come to this world. That is more true than you might think. Just who are you then? I may have arrived through the portal like you, but my story is very different. Alright, do tell them. Hmm. Got a nudge of the throat there because it's very sore, sorry. Before the fall of humanity, I was an engineer. I was part of a team that was formed to create bioweapons. Oh, for fuck's sake, you're one of the bloody founders of Umbrella, aren't you? <laughs> Why does this game keep tying to Umbrella and Resident Evil? Fuck. Our task was to create these bioweapons in a country where the development hadn't yet been regulated or outlawed. These weapons were planned to be a low-cost alternative for poor countries to wage war, so they would no longer have to rely on expensive drones and machines for warfare. I was to set up the lab where our bioweapon development would take place. It was a clandestine operation, set to be in the middle of the wilderness. The laboratory was an independent research and living unit, and provided everything we needed without having to rely on external resources or even an existing power grid. Everything was to be teleported right into the middle of nowhere, no traces of paper trail to follow, so international communities and law enforcement would have no idea of our operations. Our early connection to the outside world after setup would have been a two-way portal to our headquarters, which would have provided everything we needed. While we already could teleport individual people, teleporting a whole building was another matter entirely. Our solution was matter compression technology. Incredibly expensive, but operating in the grey market was also very lucrative. The technology behind it was much more complicated than even teleportation, despite being based on it. While teleportation works by utilising black holes with a beginning and an end, compression technology relies on a loop, keeping matter in a sort of limbo state until the loop is broken. Working with black holes was very complicated to begin with, but the shape required much more finesse, and thus was much more expensive. So it's kind of like a wormhole thing, but yeah, rather than the, it going through a black hole and getting destroyed, you keep it suspended in there until you can go, okay, that makes sense. I was to be sent home, uh, sent alone to set up the lab and the portal so the rest of the team could arrive safely. In case you didn't know, it was possible to use a portal to send someone to a previously defined endpoint. Therefore, it is not required to have a portal at the destination to be sent there, but as you can imagine, this is also very dangerous. A single variable off by a fraction could mean the difference between landing safely at your destination and smothering in space. Of course, my employer did not want anything like that to happen, not necessarily for my own sake, but because of the, all the unfavorably expensive equipment I had with me. As you can see, I'm very conservative. Regardless, something went wrong anyway. Despite all their checks and safeguards, they could only minimize the risk so much. Even if the risk is a fraction of a fraction, sometimes you are just that unlucky. Sometimes, life is shit. And sometimes it turns out that your bad luck is a blessing in disguise. I arrived safely somewhere in the jungles of Earth, yet it was not the destination that had been planned. I knew something was off, but nevertheless, I set to work immediately. At the very least, I could prepare the building, I would have shelter, and then I could begin preparations for our project. Getting the portal into working order would take more time, as it was a complicated process that could take several weeks. If things had gone wrong as I'd suspected, I would have at least been able to establish contact with headquarters after the portal had been set up, and I would be able to return. While teleporting the lab to the wrong location was certainly a costly mistake, remember cost, I was still lucky to have my life. Before long, I discovered the truth about the place I'd arrived. While I was still on Earth, it was not the Earth I knew. It was the Earth of 65 million years ago. We knew that by utilising black holes for teleportation, time travel was a theoretical possibility. It was something even my company didn't dare to attempt, though, as teleportation in itself was still a very new technology. Yet here I was, 65 million years in the past, with the research station all to myself. The company would revel in the opportunity to study and profit from all the different life forms I could see. If only they knew about them. If only they knew about money. 
I spent a few weeks setting up the portal as planned, yet when I tried to re-establish contact with my employer, I was met with silence. Despite the time discrepancy, the portal should have been able to find my companies in the present. Though black holes, sending something through time is no different than sending something through space. It still take a long time, though, unless... Because that's the problem, you see. Even if you're sending it through a black hole, I assume it would be at light speed or near enough, because nothing can escape black hole at light speed, which is the fastest thing in the universe. But you still have to travel quite large distances within time, and if this is an exploitation of time dilation, then yeah, you still have to cover great distances, even though from your perspective it might not seem that long of a distance. From the other perspective of the receiver of the black hole, the distance would be quite great and therefore might take many, many, many years. Therefore, what would you expect? That's why they're looking at... Um, theories where you, you take two parts of space and time, you pinch them and then bring them together. Essentially create a wormhole like they've done in this. So, yeah. I suppose there's still some flaws in it. However, when we built the portals, we gave them a specialised configuration. It was only possible to travel through space by aligning them across the time axis. That meant that I, in the past, would still be able to search for portals in the present to connect with. My counterparts in the present, though, would not be able to find me in the past, even if they tried. But I couldn't find them. Not a single one. Even after checking the portal for its function, I determined that for all intents and purposes, the portals from the company should have been there to connect with. It was then that I had a terrible realisation. The portals in the present didn't exist anymore. We were no longer operational. Maybe the blunder of teleporting the lab caused them to reconsider the risks of using this technology. After all, it was already controversial and had been outlawed in several countries. I wouldn't have been surprised if they decided to cut their losses, but it was highly unlikely that they would have immediately shut down every single portal and left me stranded without notice. Portal technology was still being relied on in several places in the present. In my mind, only one possibility remained. Super weapons. Various nations had been using them as bargaining chips for some time. I didn't think the threats had become that serious, but one of them must have launched their weapon and destroyed the majority of Earth. It kind of explains our Mad Max background for our character's sake, but uh, I don't know. It could have been the result of a malfunction, or perhaps the political situation had escalated. Either way, it was not possible for me to establish any means of communication to find out what had really happened. I could have sent myself back to the present with the right coordinates, but this was a risky endeavour, and I also had to ask myself if it was a present I wanted to return to. I was sure that if anything was left of our world, the aftermath or a possible retaliate, a retaliatory strike would take care of the rest. In the end, I had to realise that whichever present that did exist was likely not the one uh, was likely not one that was worth returning to. It made my decision all the easier. Instead of returning to a destroyed civilization, I saw an opportunity. Rather than creating bioweapons, I could use the lab to create a new civilization shaped by my own ideals. You see, I have a very, very, very strange dragon fetish. I, I don't know why, it's just been there since I was a kid. I had all the necessary data and the most modern methods and machines about fingertips. Besides, most of the processes had already been automated. Pretty soon, dragon sex would be within reach. In the end, I used, still used the lab for what it had been created for. Fusing human and animal DNA to create beings that were mostly animal, but possessed a greater intelligence that allowed them to learn whatever, uh, whatever we wanted them to. As I didn't have any animal samples sent with me when I initially arrived, I collected them from the sources available to me. Automated processes mixed the DNA further across the samples. New abilities were added like enhanced armor, flight, and spit weapons to make the creatures more effective in combat. As you can see, I clearly had a dragon fetish. The result was a number of different species, each tailored and optimized for a specific role in a war situation. Hormones allowed me to speed up their growth. With the lab's learning program, they could be educated in whatever manner I saw fit. Essentially, you are becoming a god. My first concern was self-sufficiency. They needed the kind of knowledge that would enable them to come together as their own independent society. Luckily, the AI that automated all the processes in the lab was more than helpful. I unleashed the first generation of my creation, and as their leader, I founded our first village. I thought if we could really pull it off, or we could really pull it off, and once I saw that they could survive without any guidance and also govern themselves, I knew my plan was a success. Fair enough. How are you still alive all this time then, or is it still 65 million years in the past then? When I realised that this new society would eventually be destroyed, I told myself that I would do anything I could to save it. Destroyed? What are you talking about? Haven't you realised where we are? That chicks of the asteroid is headed for us. Wait, what? What the di- Oh! Uh, is that the- Is that the asteroid that supposedly killed the dinosaurs? I guess. With a diameter of over 10 kilometers, its impact will create huge, humongous clouds of dust throwing Earth into a literal dark age. I'm guessing, or maybe an asteroid of a similar nature. They will block out the sunlight for over a year, killing off many species of plants that rely on photosynthesis to survive. As a result, animals that eat those plants will also vanish, as will those who sort substance from those uh, from these herbivores. All in all, 75% of species will vanish, and terrestrial ecosystems or animals heavier than a single kilogram will die. That would be 2.2 pounds, in case you didn't know. No, no, I'm British, I know the kilograms. <coughs> Although we did used to use the old uh, 
fuck, what was it called? Not metric system. The imperial system, I think that was it. Or whatever the fuck it was called. It will be the very end of everyone who lives here. Every single dragon you have ever seen. Unless we do something. We? Well, what am I supposed to do? I'm trying to solve a fucking murder situation and bone a female dragon who's a bloody sadistic laboratory enhanced freak. Now I'm gonna save the world from a fucking asteroid! It's like that game. Meteorite in 60 seconds. Do not wish to save them. I came here to help humanity. Now that you tell me that this society, this whole world, is also on the brink of extinction, that is the truth. Well, what kind of difference could a single person like me even make to save it? Right now, it's also a single person that presents its greatest threat. Leza? How? In order to stop the comments, we will need as much power as possible. But we reclaimed all the generators he stole. Besides, how could a few of them be enough to make a difference for something like this? Don't forget that Reza is still out there looking for more. The truth is, I don't know if all the generators we could gather would ever be enough. So is Reza working for you then, and collecting all the generators then? Is that what's all? Is this is this it then? Is Reza working for you then, or is he still a rogue thing? We only require enough power to divert the comet's path during a crucial moment, but even if this plan is possible, we'll need every single generator we can get. So my goal hasn't changed. We just need to find Reza. Yes, but you'll need my help, and maybe the help of others. You know that Reza is dangerous, and with his gun, he has a clear advantage. Could we not make a fucking gun? You came from the future, where they had bioweapons, but I'm sure you know you had, or at least in your AI thing that you were talking about earlier, some sort of idea to make guns. Could we not just make a fucking gun now? I mean, there's all kinds of materials here that are very Earth-like, because this is Earth. Can we not just make a gun? Like a bigger one? Or like a homing system? Or some shit like that? I'm sure it wouldn't take very long. Did none of this come to your head, by the way? This is just... Oh. Okay, whatever, maybe there's a reason for it. Don't think that he wouldn't hesitate to kill you if you were in his way. Then what shall we do? Do you know where he is? No, but I think you'll find him soon. You can count on my support when that happens. I see. There's one thing that still doesn't make sense to me, though. Dragons have myths about you, but they don't know or remember you. They haven't seen any humans for who knows how long. How much time could have passed since you created them and now? How many generations could it take to forget? Why isn't there proof of your existence? I don't know exactly how long it's been myself. When I realized what time period I was in, and that my creation was about to be wiped out in the future, I wanted to go to that future and see what they had become. Oh, I see, right. I disabled the portal's time access safeguards, and thus enabled it to connect with others in different times. This also included that very same portal into the future. With the generator of our lab being able to supply the portal with power for an indefinite amount of time, I was able to travel to any point in the future I wanted to. The entry and end point of the black hole would have been the same place and the same portal, with the way travel just being just along the time axis. Since I could now search for connection points in any time period, I could look for my own portal in the future and pinpoint the moment his signal stopped. But coming. Exactly. I found that specific point in time and traveled to a future that was as close to that event as I could safely manage. After I arrived here, my escape from the portal's hiding place led to its discovery by the dragons. It and the laboratory were unearthed. They still don't understand how our portal found yours or why we ended up arriving at this particular time period. The portal we found was no doubt one of my companies. They must have been connected before, so the corresponding data for their connection already existed when you found it. I'm not sure if they could bypass the anti time travel safeguards, though. Was it completely operational when you found it? Uh, no, it took a little bit of tinkering. Probably jumping the hardware safeguard in the process. Now consider that connected portals travel along the time axis together. The data for that beginning and end points are adjusted automatically. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to transport anything from one place to the other, uh, one place in the world to another, without also sending it through time. Since these two portals must have been connected at some point, the corresponding data for the connection between those two portals already existed. When using the same connection without changing, fuck me out, this is taking a long time. Without changing any of the data, this would mean that despite the time discrepancy between those two portals, the time still progressed linearly for them. I'm not sure I understand. I'm a physicist. I get some of this. I really do. But I never. I think this kind of like involves a lot of general relativity. Uh, there's a bit of special relativity, but I think it's mentioned general relativity. He hasn't mentioned gravitational theory and all that, but it's kind of based on that sort of whole space-time... Actually, no, no. I suppose it is special relativity. Because general relativity is all about the whole thing that um, space and time... Uh, space and time is the same, but it's curved as well, because gravity actually curves it. And uh, it's basically... Uh, trying to implement, I think, gravity and its properties to all the equations we know, and it's fucking ridiculous. It is bizarre. But recently they did discover gravitational waves, um, and, well, they say they have, whether they did or not, I don't know. Um, and uh, that would be a great way, then, if we could ever utilise it to try and detect dark matter and dark energy. But then again, in order to create gravity waves sufficient enough to do that, you need black holes. <laughs> like, we're going to create one of those. <coughs> anyway, whatever. Let me try to rephrase that. The portal you found in my own share a connection. However, while the connection is locked to a certain place, which is wherever the portal is at the very moment, it's not connected to a specific point in 
time. For us and the physical machines that are the portals, time passes linearly, we can't do anything about that. However, for the black holes, that isn't the case. Just as their entry and endpoints can be found in different places, they can also be in different times. In order to not send something through the time, when we just want to transport something from one portal to another, the portals are anchored together in such a way that the time data is automatically synchronised. Essentially, this means that ever since you arrived in this world, the same amount of time has passed for you has also passed in the place where you came from. Right, so basically, by, by that sentence alone makes sense. It bypasses time dilation then. Gotcha. I see, so despite being in different time periods, time still passes linearly on both sides of the portals. Yeah, okay. If you know special relativity and time dilation, that would make sense. So I get that. Otherwise, it would not have been possible for you to send messages back and forth to each other. Yep, yeah, makes sense. If they were not synchronised, the portals on both sides would stay connected not only to a single point in space, but also to a single point in time, thus making proper two-way communication impossible. Right, yeah, totally get it. However, this is only possible through the connection that's already been forged. If we wanted to, we could also use our portal to send you back to your own time period, but for a moment before Reza even arrived here. But that would mean there would be two of me, right? Wouldn't that cause a time paradox? Snake, you created a time paradox! I can only tell you that it would work. No one has ever studied time travel before. Though, so if there were any consequences, I'm not sure of them. Most likely an entirely new timeline would be created. Yeah, there is that point where um, there's the theory that if you were able to go back in time to get past cause and causality, as soon as you changed an event in a previous timeline, or the timeline that you've been following all this time, you don't actually affect the timeline you've left, but you go into another timeline, and that's why you've got parallel timelines. So in other words, that's how you bypass cause and causality. Um, so yeah, so interesting. There would be a timeline without a new ramble altogether, and in the new one, there would be two of you. This is becoming way too complicated. I apologise. To come back to your original question, I'm not sure how much time passed between the time I left my newborn society and now. Since the portal was not designed for time travel, I have no way of knowing how the variables translated to our perception of time. It could have been thousands or even millions of years. Well, how can the portal or even its power source still be operation after all this time? The portal receives its power from the generator in the lab. These units are fitted with the absolute best technology we have to offer. It was designed to provide sustainable power completely independently from any already existing network or power lines. It gains energy from many sources, sun rays, earth's heat movements, just to name a few. Keep in mind that it had to power a whole laboratory and research station while also providing the energy required for all of its inhabitants and the associated energy expenditures. Taking its power from earth itself, a generator like this could continue providing power to the lab indefinitely. Speaking of which, why haven't even a single dinosaur... Why haven't I seen a single dinosaur since I arrived? It seems that the Dragon Society expanded over the whole continent. Many still, hunt, uh, still hunt on their own for substance. To such, the original species they were based on must have mostly vanished, as in direct competition. That was proved to be far superior. Also, they have probably taken measures against having big predators roam their cities and villages. Yet, yeah, while the dragon population has increased tremendously, I have found that, by and large, the society as a whole has not changed much. Is that why everything here looks like it was made for humans? I suppose so. The learning program I initially used gave them knowledge about things and how to create them, because, of course, those were only human inventions and designs. Did they never once stop to think that they should just adjust how things look, or certain things look? A lot of the furniture and objects I've seen look very impractical for a dragon. I was surprised at that too, but I have an explanation for this phenomenon. Fucking hell. Don't forget that their genome was designed by an AI program to make them into effective bioweapons. The idea was to have them indoctrinated at a young age. After reaching adolescence, their learning capacity would be greatly diminished. This resulted in subjects that would stay loyal and be unlikely to change their desired behaviours. Instincts also played a role. I imagine they were very, uh, at I imagine they are very much at odds with their learned behaviour. Instincts and animals never change, and instinctual behaviours will always be there. If a given trait has been programmed into their genome as an instinct, it is not very likely to change, even through numerous generations. Uh, generations. We can see the result of this here. While I initially made them learn a certain set of values and knowledge, I have found that the expression of those ideas has hardly changed. And after I was gone, each new generation learned from its elders, and much of the initial knowledge and information was retained through all this time. The genome as a whole did change, however, which was unavoidable over time. If they had been used as bioweapons as intended, they would have been nothing more than an army of identical clones. While I can certainly see subtle changes in behaviours as a result, some traits are still very much present in them. They are content with what they have and don't strive for more. They don't innovate or change, so technological breakthroughs or new inventions are a rarity. It's quite the opposite, really. They very, they very much value tradition in their ways which have not changed much in all these years. I see. How much time do we even have left to stop the comet? In a few weeks, the comet will pass the moon, and its gravity field will point the comet trajectory towards Earth. This is when we'll need to be ready. If we strike then, we only need to minimally affect its path in order for the comet to pass Earth safely. There won't be enough time for the inhabitants of this world to prepare if Reza steals our greatest assets. So it's all about Reza and the generators, isn't it? Indeed. By the way, I fixed the portal in case we need to use it. Did you break it to prevent me from being sent away? No, that wasn't me. Reza better not use it to escape. Trust me, the portal is our greatest asset. I have programmed it with emergency coordinates. If you should find yourself in a hopeless situation and feel there's no other way out, go to the portal. I've made sure only you will be able to use it then. I'll keep that in mind. 
So what's your plan? What do we do now? I will resume my work and you will continue yours. Fine, Reza. The administrator turned to leave. Wait! What's with all the secrecy? Why are you still wearing that mask? Why don't we pull our resources together and you share me your hideout? Don't you think it would be better if you were completely frank with me? And not Billy? No. Not now. Is this us? Is this us in the future? This is us, isn't it? This is us in the future. That makes sense. This is us. That's us, isn't it? Because he can't reveal himself to us. Because if he does, that could create a time paradox. And he doesn't know, does he? Because he was a biologist. Then again, he talks about... No, it can't be us, can it, though? Unless it's a different Reza, maybe? Because Reza was an engineer. No, he says he was an engineer. No, it can't be us. It must be another Reza. Maybe it's a Reza from a different timeline. That would make sense. And he doesn't want to reveal himself to us now. Because then it will be two Rezas at the same timeline. And it could break things down. Yeah, it can't be us. It, if it is us, that's fair enough. But I don't think it is because we're a biologist. Um, yeah, I think it's Reza. This is a different Reza, isn't it? <coughs> so revealing to us now is not going to work. Okay, fair enough. When I followed, I realised that I wasn't sure I had to get back to my apartment. God, fuck. It's because he spent all this time talking about bloody advanced physics and shit. And now I'm like, I can't even remember what cake looks like. Surrounded by trees and the blanket of night, it was hard to make out where I stood. After wandering through the underbrush, I realised that the lights on the horizon had to be coming from the village and made my way back. Well, okay. I returned to my apartment without much trouble. When I looked at the clock, I was surprised to see how much time had passed. Were you? Were you? After all that fucking physics lecture we just had there? Jesus. Not having anything left to do for the day, I soon fell into a deep slumber. <laughs> and the camera just pans away as our soul lifted from our bodies. Seems there's nothing for me to do this morning. I guess they don't need me at the police department. Not that I mind. Uh, right, oh, we can only meet with Remy and Lorem or order some lunch. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to end the video here for now. Because that was a hell of a lot of information being thrown at us. Um, but, okay, fair enough. So, it looks like Reza is the big culprit of everything that's going on, which is interesting. So, what his plan is, I have no idea. Um, and, uh, Bryce is dead, so we've had to accept that. See, now that he's been mentioning time, the administrator, and then the system mentioned timelines, I think that's why the system was threatening us that it would delete the game and we'd have to set up a new timeline, because it would affect the game's sort of fundamental, not mechanics per, per se, but it's law, shall we say. Um, so I think, thinking about it now, the reason why the system said that to us and probably meant it was because it is simply just backing the law up. But what I want to know is, is this, this all a big meta sort of experience still? That's the only thing that's still over my head a bit. Or whether the system is just a mechanic, but again, because of the law of the game and the whole idea of time travel and um literally general theory of relativity and all that and being able to go and use wormhole technologies and all that to do all this stuff and in a sense as well religious in a way in that it's also talking about being a god and creating species etc etc um yeah i'm wondering if that's what that's all about so it's not malicious per se it's just well, you know, if you're doing that, you'd have to create... That's the reason why it said you'd have to create a new timeline, because if you go back in the past and change what happened, then, yeah, it would create a new timeline, and that's what the game's trying to do. It's just trying to stick to its law and stick to its understanding of physics. Um, in which case, kudos. Fair enough. Can't fault that for nothing. So, yeah, okay. I think that's where I'm at at the moment in terms of understanding of everything. But what we'll do is we'll save the game. And again, please let me know, you know, in terms of my progress, how I'm doing. Should I do anything again? Um, should I... Um, is there anything I messed up with Anna particularly? Um, or is there any sort of events that I should have done or done in a different way to get what I want, which is a good ending with Anna at the very least? And other than that, um, yeah, any comments you've got to add to the lore and stuff that doesn't spoil everything but just expands on things a bit that isn't too revealy, please let me know. I'll try and read it as best as I can. But other than that, uh, till next time then, uh, can I say thank you very much for watching. I hope you had enjoyed your physics lesson for the day. And uh, until next time, take it easy, have a good one, hope you're well. I'm still enjoying this game can't see where i can't wait to see where it goes have a good one i'll see you in the next video bye for now